Hey, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. Um, I'm now answering a question from the textbook of P3 from exercise 7C, it's question number five. Um, this is from the Pure Mathematics P3 textbook from International A Level. Actually, the question that was asked is this question down here, which is from the C4 textbook, um, the old C4 textbook, um, exercise 6.3, question 3E on page 95. But I'm going to go through this question here um, in order for us to understand how to answer that question. And this is something actually which for some reason is kind of missed out in the new P3 and P4 textbooks. Um, but the factor formula which this kind of idea you know, leads us to answer this question from is still there in the formula book. So I still teach it to my students. Um, I don't see any change in that particular part of the syllabus, really anything mentioned different in terms of um, this particular aspect. So I just keep teaching it to my students because the factor formula are there. And this is a question actually from the P3 textbook, which kind of makes us, you know, use the same concept. So I'm going to go through this concept now. And um, I actually added a new section to my notes, which are not, you don't find those in the P3 um new p3 textbook uh, which explains this particular particular aspect of the um, double angle formulae and what they call the factor formulae so question 5a kind of like leads us to understand how something like this can be rewritten in this form so that we can integrate it okay something like this it's not easy, easy to integrate or differentiate but when you have like the sine of an angle times a cosine of a, a totally different angle okay but if we can rewrite something like this in this form, we can integrate each of these or differentiate them easily. So that's one of the uses of this uh, concept that we're going to do. So it says, by expanding sine 3x plus 2x and sine 3x minus 2x using the double angle formulae or otherwise, show that sine x plus sine 5x plus sine x is equal to 2 times sine 3x cosine 3x. So the double angle formulae, as we know from the formula book, are is like this. I've just taken a little snapshot from the formula book that is the double angle formula um, how to expand the sine of the compound angle you know the sine of a compound angle an angle plus another like you know angle plus another angle um, that's how you expand it so the sine of 3x plus 2x if we look at this this would be our 3x a would be our 3x and b would be our 2x so if we want to expand sine 3x plus 2x, we can say the sine of 3x plus 2x is equal to, you'll have the, if it's plus, there's going to be a plus between these. So you have sine of 3x cosine of 2x, a is 3x, b is 2x. So the sine of 3x times the cosine of 2x plus, and then you'll have the cosine of 3x times the sine of 2x. And if we expand sine of 3x minus 2x, well, that will give us the same things, but just with a minus sign between them. Minus cosine of 3x times the sine of 2x. Now, how can we get this from that? Well, if I call this 1 and I call this 2, and I add the two lines, 1 plus 2, then this gives me the sine of 3x plus 2x plus the sine of 3x minus 2x equals now if i add these two together these cancel out because you've got minus cosine 3x sine 2x sorry plus cosine 3x sine 2x minus the same thing but this becomes sine 3x cosine 2x plus another one of the same thing plus to end up with 2 sine 3x cosine 3 2x okay and we know that this is actually sine of 5x 3x plus 2x is 5x. So we have the sine of 5x plus the sine of, and 3x minus 2x is 1x, which is this, is equal to 2 sine 3x cosine 2x. So we've, sh we've shown what we had to show, that sine of 5x plus sine of x equals 2 sine 3x cosine 2x. So that's how we've shown that. And then it says, hence find the integral of sine 3x cosine 2x. So basically what we can do is uh, we can split this this up 
into that all right but what we can do we can we can see that the sine of 5x plus the sine of x is equal to 2 times the sine of 3x times the cosine of 2x what's the difference between this and this this has a 2 in front of it so i can say that this this would be equal to all of this divided by 2 so i can say this is like a half of the sine of 5x plus the sine of x is equal to the sine of 3x plus the co uh, times the cosine of 2x. Okay, so the sine of 3x times the cosine of 2x is equal to a half. So let me just make that a bit neater. Times the cosine of 2x. So this is equal to a half of that. So I can replace this with, with a half of sine 5x plus sine x. Okay, so I can say the integral of sine of 3x times the cosine of 2x with respect to x is equal to a half of the integral of, because I can take the constant outside, sine of 5x plus the sine of x with respect to x. And this is something that I can easily integrate. I can easily integrate this. I have a half times, and this is going to be the sine of 5x, when you integrate the sine of something, it becomes negative, the cosine of the same thing. But then you divide by the differential of what's inside the function, so you divide by 5. Okay, and the sine of x becomes minus cosine of x, divided by 1, make a difference. And then you've got your plus c, so you can write this as minus 1 over 10, cosine of 5x, minus 1 over 2, cosine of x, plus c. And there's your answer to this question, part B. Okay, so that's the answer to the question, part B. And basically what we've done here is we have formed what are called the, the, the factor formulae. These are called the factor formulae here, right? So what we did here is we kind of proved the factor formulae. Okay, so we've proved the factor formulae. So we could have answered this question almost directly without having done part A. If the question didn't have this part here, we could have proved this by looking at the form, we don't have to actually go and prove it from the beginning. We could have used the factor formula, which are in the form. This is taken from your formula book, from P3. So, for example, I would have looked at sine x cosine 2x, and I want to split it up. So, I'd look at the form that's over here, and I look at the one that says sine and then cosine. This is sine and cosine, cosine and sine, cosine, cosine, sine and sine. So, I'll be looking at the one that says sine and sine. So, what I would have done is I would have gone to the one over here that says sine and sine. Okay, over here, and I would have said, okay, I want to split something up, um, you know, so I would say that the sine of A plus B over 2 times the cosine of A minus B over 2 is equal to sine A plus B. That's the 2 in front of here, so I'd make this a half, like I did there, and I'll get rid of the 2 there. And what you'll notice is, if I add these two angles together, I get A, because A plus B over 2 plus A minus B over 2. This is like a over 2 plus a over 2, which is a, and b over 2 minus b over 2, which is 0. So this gives you um, a, sine of a. And if I subtract these two angles, I end up with b. Because I have a over 2 minus a over 2, which is 0, and b over 2 minus minus b over 2, which is b over 2 plus b over 2, which is b. So adding these two angles gives you this angle, and subtracting these two angles gives you that angle. It's the same for each of these. So adding these two angles here, Okay, adding these two angles gives you this angle. As you can see, 3 plus 2 is 5, so 3x plus 2x is 5x. And subtracting these two angles gives you those, that angle. 3x minus 2x is, is 1x, and it works every time the same way. So if you want to go this way, you just, uh, you know, put a half of this, and then you add this angle with that angle, it gives you the angle over there, and you add that angle, subtract these two angles, it gives you the angle over there. And that's how you can, com you can write something from a product into a sum, a product you can't integrate very easily, a sum you can, even if the angles are different. Okay, you can integrate each term separately. All right, so that's the concept we're going to use now to solve this problem here. Okay, I'm going to use the same concept now to apply to the question that was actually asked by the student. Now, my guess is the student knows how to do this, but was confused by the fact that this is 3x and 7x. So I'm going to show you that, first of all, what I will do here is I'll rewrite this, okay, as cosine 7x times cosine 3x. And that does, really doesn't make any difference 
in terms of, you know, you can have A times B, B times A, it's the same thing. Two times three, three times two, same thing. So it doesn't make any difference, but it just makes our calculation slightly easier. And then in the end, I'll also show you how to do it the way it is now and explain why it's actually the same thing. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to look at the one that has a result that says cosine times cosine. And the only one that has cosine times cosine as a product is this one. So we will use this third one here to split this up into two separate parts. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, okay, take this as a half because I'm going this way. And I've got cosine times cosine, so I'll take this as a half. So I'll leave this, that four out there for now. And this is going to be a half times. And then I'm going to I have to add these two angles to give me this. So 7x plus 3x is 10x. So I have cosine of 10x. And there's a plus between them. So I'll put plus. And then I subtract these two angles to give me this. So 7x minus 3x is 4x. And then that's what I have to do. So 4 times a half is 2. So I'll write the 2 outside for now. So I want to integrate this. This integrating this. Sorry. I'm supposed to say cosine 4x cosine 4x cosine 10x plus cosine 4x with respect to x now when you integrate the cosine of something you get positive sine of the same thing so you're going to get sine of 10x divided by 10 and cosine of sorry sine of when you integrate cosine you get sine so sine of 4x divided by 4 so integrating cosine of something it just changes to cosine, positive sign, and then you divide by the differential of what's inside the function, and then you have your plus C, okay? Um, now, one of the points I'd like to make, not every type of integration involves adding one to the power. That's only when you have a polynomial, like x to the power of three or something. That's when you add one to the power. If you have e to the power of x, you don't do anything to it. If you have cosine of x, it becomes sine x. There's no adding to the powers in every type of integration. Like, like until P2, that's what we learned. But other types of functions don't integrate in that way. If we, if we, if we integrate something like uh, 1 over x, it becomes lin x. All right? And, and so on. So there's, in, you know, integrating a to the power of x gives you a to the power of x lin, uh, over lin a. So different types of, of, of functions integrate in different ways. And trig functions don't integrate by adding 1 to the power if that's the main function. Here, the main function is cosine of something. So it integrates becomes sine of something. Inside the function is 10x. So we divide by the differential what's inside the function. Okay, so this is, you know, these two can be integrated like this. And the reason I can do this like this, if it was squared, I couldn't. Because then the main function would be something squared. And then I have to have something multiplying outside it, which is the differential of what's inside it. So here, what's outside the function, um, you know, is the differential of what's inside the function. Because inside the function is 10x, outside the function is 1. So we can use this method so here we have um two times sine 10x over that's going to be one over five sine of 10x plus one over two sine of 4x plus c and there's the answer to this question okay now i was i, I said i'm going to explain how to do it supposing the question we kept it in the same way cosine of 3x times cosine of 7x it will split up in exactly the same way. You'll have a half times four. I'll write that outside. The integral of. Now, I'd have to add these two angles together. So the first one would be the same. That would be cosine of 10x. But then when I subtract the angles, I'll get cosine of negative 4x. Because 3x minus 7x is negative 4x. Now, that's probably where the student got confused. Now, what we can understand from this. Well, we could, we could actually um, um, integrate this as normal. Okay. Um, but the thing is with with the cosine of negative a negative angle, what you should understand is you have something like this with the cosine curve. The cosine curve is symmetrical about the y-axis. So, for example, the cosine of sixty and the cosine of negative sixty they give you exactly the same value. So, the cosine of negative b will be the same as the cosine of positive b. They'll give you exactly the same value. So the cosine of negative 4x is the same as the cosine of 4x. Okay, so when you integrate cosine of negative 4x, it's like integrating the cosine of positive 4x. So then the answer will be the same, be exactly the same. However, even if we were to, um, you know, leave this as cosine of negative 4x, okay, 
even if we were to leave it like this and we integrate it like this, we should still come up with the same answer. Because when you integrate cosine of negative 4x and you don't understand that it's the same as 4x anyway, if you integrate this, you're going to say the cosine of something when you integrate it is going to give you positive sine of the same thing. So it will be sine of minus 4x and then you divide by the differential inside of the function which is minus 4. Okay, so you'll have minus a quarter, the sine of minus 4x. Now, the sine curve is different from the cosine curve. Okay, for example, the sine of 30 won't give you the same as sine of negative 30. Okay, the sine of 30 will give you the opposite of the sine of negative 30. So the sine of negative, four, negative 30 is the same as, you can say, if you have the sine of negative 30, the value will be the same as the sine of 30, but the opposite sign. The sine of negative 30 gives you something down here. The sine of positive 30 gives you the opposite sign. So we can say that the sine of minus b is the same as minus the sine of b. So this will be the same as minus a quarter times minus, four, minus 1 times sine of 4x. So this gives you positive sine of 4x, okay, which is exactly uh, what we get. Positive sine of 4x and then uh, divided by 4. Positive sine of 4x divided by 4. So even if you kept it the same, it would give you the same answer. But that's a bit more complicated. If you think about it like this, if you think about it like this, that this, this is the same as cosine of 4x because of the symmetry, then you can proceed. But even easier is to, in the beginning, just swap them around because products can be written in any order and that just saves that confusion straight to, from the beginning. All right, so that's how you deal with such questions. This is something which is called the factor formulae. You haven't seen that many examples of it in any of the newer papers at all. I uh, haven't seen this in the, the new, the new, the, in the new book, in the P3 book. This is the only question that's kind of involving this that I saw. All right, but it was definitely in the old syllabus. Okay, it was definitely in the old syllabus, in the old book. And um, I just teach it in case it does come up. It's useful. It's a way to integrate something when, or differentiate when you've got something where there's a product of uh, these ratios with different angles. You can split them up into two separate parts and each of them can be integrated or differentiated quite easily uh, together and the other uh, what also you can use it for is going this way sometimes i think there's a question i put up like that if you go from there to there you can solve equations especially if it says equals zero so sine 5x plus sine x equals zero you want to solve that equation you can write that as a product and then you can say ah, oh, either sine 3x equals zero or cosine 2x equals zero and you can solve it okay so there's um you know, one another way to write this as a product to help you solve equations when it's say equals zero using the zero product property. But uh, as I said, I haven't really seen this um, in the new exams and stuff. But just in case, you know, I thought I'd go through it, especially as one of the students asked me this question from the old book. This is where you find the same thing in the new book. All right. So um, well, oh, that was old C4. This is the new P3. And this this is kind of under P3 because it's to do with trig identities and integration. Um, anyway, that wraps up this video. Any um, questions that you have, as I said, you're welcome to ask and get around to it. I will try to answer them. So other questions from the P3 textbook in Chapter 7 on integration can be found in the playlist that will appear over here. Other questions on integration in general from p3 can be found in this playlist you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link you can watch the video the link for which will be over here which will take you tell you how to use my channel to find what you need efficiently thank you for watching and see you soon